Hi everyone, welcome back to my Beach Angel Tarot. I'm going to be doing the Love Vampire reading for 2020 for Halloween. This is meant to be a fun reading, just checking the energies. It's not to be scary. I know a lot of people are afraid of vampire type energy, darker decks, etc. But <clears throat> I'm kind of over it. I think it's all about intention and our own fears and whatnot. So <clears throat> if you're not into vampire energy or if you're fearful of it, I would just, you know, click off the video or you can probably have clicked in the first place. So that being said, we're going to dive in. We're going to use the um, love and love and tragedy <clears throat> deck. And then we're going to use the Tarot de la Newt deck to do the reading. So I'm going to connect, see what message comes up from this deck for everyone. And it's this one, and it's faith for our <clears throat> for our opening. And I'm gonna read it, and then I'm gonna pop it up here. Okay, so it says you are being called to hold faith within your soul right now. Move forward knowing that sometimes we have to take a leap even if we cannot see the outcome. Sometimes our soul calls us to move simply to teach us we can, to be driven and to be guided by inner faith that is that regardless of the outcome, there is something to learn through the experience. So, we're being called into faith in this moment. This could be a relationship that kind of tests your faith for some reason. So the first part of this is fang, fang number one. Did you know vampires have two fangs? So the first fang is how your partner is seeing you. Um, and he's seeing you as the king of swords. So very analytical. He's seeing you as someone that is not in your emotions. This is a rather dark card. Um, very protected, very guarded. In your energy. So not, not someone that is emotionally attached to them, for sure. This is somebody that is kind of in your thoughts, that kind of energy. I'm going to just take a peek. Sometimes this booklet will give me more of a message. I don't usually gravitate towards a book, but for some reason I feel like... Keep the heart away. I have commanded. I have battled. I have ruled. I am your leader. I have to submit to my authority and laws. I don't care if you think I'm sympathetic. I'm not symp sympathetic or sweet. Oh, this is not what I have to be. My order to you is that you keep your emotions under control. I want you to remain rational, objective, lucid. Use your intellectual power to analyze calmly the situation. Stay fair, but also firm. Fancy dreams. Or impulsive decisions are not appropriate right now. Untidy emotions mustn't get in the way. I won't tolerate childishness or inconsistency. So there's a message there. I won't tolerate childishness or inconsistency. You won't touch me with tears or compliments. I demand that you put a clear eye on the matter and then, and then that you resolve the problem without moaning. Powerful intellect, great authority, sharp mind, impartiality, the use the head not the heart so very disconnected from the heart they're seeing you right now um but also i feel like not ch not tolerating childish or inconsistency so perhaps they've done something that was inconsistent with their words or something that they said or did um you just kind of like not having it that's how they're seeing you right now how their how your partner feels for you this is fang number two does this partner have a heart and it is angel de la newt this is interesting I don't know what this is in this deck, so I'm definitely going to have to look. Um, I've never pulled that card in this deck before. So it's rather surprising, too, because it was like something I didn't expect. 
quite honestly, and it says angel, so. So I don't know why, but I don't see where this angel thing is, but I'm being guided to read this part of this booklet. It says, this deck is not another deck dark deck. This deck is not, a, not another dark deck. So th they're already seeing you as someone that is angelic, obviously, because of the angel. And they perhaps, or you may have perceived them as being angelic, and they see you as being angelic. And you're not just another dark, fallen type of angel. You're not a dark energy. Um, it's a deck for those who are ready to go beyond appearances. Those who are ready to find beauty and inspiration and in the most unusual places. So that's how they feel for you. They're ready to, they feel that you go beyond appearances. So you run deeper than your physical appearance. So they're seeing you beyond your physical appearance. They find your beauty and inspiration. And it's like an unusual, it's like something that, like, like, like sort of when I pulled it, I was like taken aback, kind of, shocked what is that i didn't see, i've never seen this card in this deck so it's like something that stands out from the rest um as how they're seeing you it goes by the same traditional mystical and mysterious world full of mystical creatures black magic and spells so they're seeing you as very mysterious very mystical. I don't know that you're, I mean, I'm not saying you're dressed like a goth or anything like that, but you have an angelic appearance, but a dark side. And that contrast is very mesmerizing to this person, to your partner. Um, and I'm not even saying you're practicing black magic or spells even, but it has that lure. You have that type of lure. You have a dark, a dark side that they're sensing and aware of even though you're very angelic um, and unique. So they're sensing something in you beyond an outward appearance of being very angelic, present, presence. Um, dark beauty is everywhere, revealing its deepest secrets and nobility. So it's like a dark secret within you that they sense. I'm kind of seeing like a black egg kind of thing. I think there's a duck the wild unknown that has a dark egg in it, like a black egg. But that's what I'm seeing. Um, it's, it's very, very kind of strange. I don't know. That was like really, you know, out there. Um, so that's how you're being perceived. So they're seeing that dark side of you, a dark secret with, that lies within you. So they're very drawn to you um, on a psychic level, um, an intuitive level, and sensing something a dark secret within you that is very mysterious to them, but very alluring. They're very drawn to that um, because you have like this contrasting outward angelic appearance, um, but there's a part of you that is very deep, dark, and unique to them and very mysterious. Drop of blood. You and your partner, um, you and your partner as a couple, a blend of energies together, and it is the King of Wands. So this is fiery energy. This is passion. This is... Um, controlling fire. This is like the king of fire. So it's controlling fire. It's um, very hot, very passionate, very heated um, energy is what I'm getting. So the both of you are connected on this sacral chakra. I would say first, you know, not be not saying there's no love here, but there is a very sexual, sensual, fiery heat here um, that can even be like heart on fire it's like um and it says do you fear vampires you shouldn't fear me i won't bite you and even instead i bring you good news i am pure energy soul so the, together you're pure you're a pure energy soul and you have clear vision of what you want your world to be. So that's your blend of energies together. It's a pure energy soul. It's a very fiery, um, combustible. And that's funny because a lot of my other readings, I was getting that fiery vortex kind of feeling. Um, 
interesting. You know, it was like a tornado fire swirling around in my third eye. Um, so this kind of is the same. You're a pure energy soul and you have a clear vision of what you want your world to be. I do not use the night to destroy. I use it to create. So the night is the darkness. So there's something within you, that dark side of that angelic appearance that this person and you use to create, not to destroy. Because um, it says, I use the night. I do not use the night. So you do not use the dark to destroy, but you use it to create. I hate boredom and I hate daily routine. And I only drink the blood of the weak and the coward. But for the brave of heart, I offer my support and strong arm. I want you to stand tall and to never doubt, to interfere. You can achieve your goal, but you and you can manifest your dream. I know you can. So there's a sense here of manifestation too, and using a darker energy to create, not to destroy. Um, so it's to use the dark for good. So together, you can use the dark for good. There is a fiery sexual passion here. It's very, wow, this is very interesting to me. Garlic, are there outside energies affecting your relationship that you need to defend the energy from? And sometimes this can be something within, and it's the will. And so it's something a little bit out of your control. This is a very vast um, universal energy. So that is something that is going to be hard to defend against. I don't see it as a person per se. I see it as time, needing to wait for divine timing, needing the timing to be right, needing things to be um, to come together and for the universe to move things uh, for you. So it's a sense of divine timing that... But you can't fight time, right? You can't fight against the hands of time. Um, time does with you what it will, right? So it's. I'm just going to take a peek to see if anything comes up. It doesn't feel like a person. Um, and it may even be an inner thing with it, with it being like a sense of the hands of destiny. We are the fates. We hold the thread of the destiny. We decide the birth and we decide the, of death. Life is a journey made of ups and downs, joy and sadness. Sometimes night will be starry and illuminated. Some other times night will be dark and harsh. So conditions. Fighting against outward conditions because it says you guys use the dark to create, not to destroy. And so this is saying the dark. Sometimes there's up, you know, sometimes the night will be starry and illuminated. And sometimes your night's going to be dark and harsh. So it's to sets out timing um, to, to, do, to use the dark to create. So there is an element of, oh my God, it's like so weird. It's like timelining and jumping. I don't want to say jumping timelines, but like navigating that darkness that you need to create and sussing out when um, the best timing, so to speak, is hard to describe the feeling that's kind of coming here. This is bizarre. Um, the, those are the cycles of any existence. And this you must accept. So it's a sense of acceptance, being an acceptance of needing things to be in alignment for you to be able to create with that darkness. Which means you must have, feel blessed when good times are here. And you also have to stand strong when bad times come. Adversity is to be faced with courage and determination. Because there's no way you can change the challenges we bring to you. So you must accept the ride and trust that we know what we're doing. We are also here to remind you that according to karma, your actions will follow you. So I always act good. Cycles, fates, ups and downs. Life as a roller coaster changes karma. So it's to fight against... Um, to defend the energies of something that's beyond your control, really. I mean, you really can't. So it's to it's to come into an energy of acceptance, kind of the serenity prayer in regards to it. Um, it's like weaving in and out and connecting with each other. So this may be through lifetimes. Maybe this is something that you don't always connect in every lifetime. It kind of feels past life-ish. And um, taking full advantage of this connection in the lifetimes that you do connect is the sense here. Um, and just being in acceptance that of the lifetimes that you don't connect, you have to accept that. So there is a grander outside of time feeling with this card than just like, you know, this is something much bigger than defending against people. This is a feeling of defending against your decisions in each lifetime, which will determine if you re reconnect in, a, in another life. Because I feel like when you come together in lifetimes, big work is accomplished. Like you use the darkness to your advantage. And so you're a light worker in a way that dabbles in the darkness, but uses it to your advantage. So um, you kind of like, I don't want to say trick the darkness, um, but you definitely utilize it for the good of the light. And so 
um, it's kind of like weaving into these energies. And so I'm, that's kind of rather a, a, something different for me. I'm kind of like speechless with the feeling that's coming with that. Um, so I know that sounds crazy, but it's something that you really can't control, but you need to come into acceptance of how it kind of weaves together. And it feels lifetime aspected, not something in this particular life. So it feels past life energy. Yet again, uh, what will happen next in your relationship? Seven of Swords. It was in reverse. Um, I want to pull from... Seven of Swords is a card of deception. But I want to read. Let's read it first and then I'll pull from the... Um, because it was in reverse. Seven of Swords. The Great Escape. Oh, okay. This is good. Because I didn't feel it bad. I didn't feel it bad. It says, I've done something really bad and I have to run away before someone discovers my infamy. I wish the moon wasn't so bright. She brings so much light upon my running. Oh, blimey. I feel like I'm being watched. I must run faster. How about you? I can see that you're escaping too. Let's meet in the forest later where we'll be safe. What is it you're running away from? Too much responsibilities, commitment, work, love, whatever it may be. Okay. So what I get here, what's going to happen next is um, there's an element of secrecy here and it's talking about meeting in the woods. So I feel like you know, you may both run away together and meet somewhere is what I'm getting. Why this is secretive, I don't know if it has something to do with the other big thing and energy I was feeling there. Or if it's just something you don't want others to know about. Um, of course, as flight specialists, I could advise you to face reality instead of fleeing from it. Because systematic flight, systematic flight really leads nowhere. But I have no time for that. I must run escapism okay so i feel like because this didn't feel bad it feels like you're going to run away together and there's an element of secrecy here i'm gonna pull from the love and tragedy just to add to it but that's what's gonna happen next it could be it talked about a full moon so it could be around a full moon time because it talked about the light and it's mending and it can be also mending something that was betrayal be felt betrayal to you hearts can heal and love can restore when both parties want to put in the effort this card symbolizes that work is in progress to mend something that was once tested so if there has been some betrayal or something that wasn't cool somebody was running there's going to be a coming back a coming together a meeting i feel that is going to um mend and repair that but it could also be some sort of element of secrecy too of coming together and running away and meeting somewhere for some people so take it as you will but there is going to be a repairing of anything that was um not cool or something that felt be like you were betrayed and again that could be a sense from past life this could be rectifying karma from past life as well when you come together in perhaps this life wow this is very very interesting um what spiritual growth does this partnership bring to you and it is page of wands and again, it's that spark. There is a fiery spark coming up here. Very bluish. Um, I'm going to read from the booklet. It's a spark. Creative spark. So it could it could be that it... Hmm, it could be that it ignites a create, creative spark within you. And it could also have to do with... Um, Sacred sexuality is the word. Wow, that just wanted to come right out there. It has something to do with sacred sexuality, too, for sure. Because it just, it, it just like came out like a, I don't even know where this came, words came from. It just like popped in there. Um, so that could be tantric. That could be Kundalini rising energy, um, which doesn't. I know for some people are like, what does that have to do with that? Uh, spirituality but it does uh, because it is part of a night to begin again I love beginnings and new adventures I love life I love nature I love freedom I love variety I love bringing some unexpected but welcome news maybe I'm a bit inexperienced but who cares enthusiasm is my wisdom and I will go I will and my will to grow makes makes my spark I don't fear dark forests. So there's a sense of no fearing. It's also 
realizing your inner bright light and not fearing the darkness. I don't fear dark forests. They're they're put they're put there and they're part of my they're part of the way, no big deal. I know I can trust my inner power. You should do just the same. Start afresh, don't fear the night. Protecting elves will always be at your side. I know they will. So again, a sense of connecting with fairies and elves and that kind of energy too. The world needs your creative ideas, don't you see? So be spontaneous and sure of yourself. Don't waste so much time on making useless plans. So being spontaneous, I feel sacred sexuality. I feel connection to nature, um, connection to the fairies, connection to inner magic, new start, uh, new potential, enthusiasm, spontaneity, and good news. But I feel like a sense of not fearing the dark being um, aware of your own inner spark, your own inner inner creative magic, um, and again, that sacred sexuality that just popped out of there from nowhere. Um, what will, okay, that was spiritual. Advice from the vampires, will this love last forever? And it is the devil. So for me, oddly enough, the devil is connection to Capricorn. It's a connection to St. Nicholas in a roundabout odd way. I'm going to pull another one just to see. And it's Ace of Pentacles. Of course, they told me to pull another one. <laughs> just to know that my my intuition there was right. Aces are yeses to any questions. Um, and Pentacles, again, is... And Capricorn is uh, also Earth. So, yes. Um, will it last forever? Yes, it will last forever. And... Um, on this earth plane but you know there again what I said about the fates the will of fortune uh, there's a sense here of not being able to connect in each lifetime so I don't know what went on there in past lives but there is a weaving in of out of lives there's a weaving in and out of timeline feeling with this um, partner uh, but in this particular life meeting this person being with this person yes it can last forever in this particular ace pentacle earthly incarnation um and it is a gift like from saint nicholas with the i know with the devil i know people are going how do you get that but it's just the energy of capricorn that brings me to that and it's just how i'm being guided lately um because the devil is things that are can be pleasurable too so it's not like it's all bad um I just want to see just the devil. It says, I live in the hell of night. I'm here to dominate you, or so you believe. So there's a sense of belief here even too with Nicholas. I represent your hidden impulses, your inner fears, and your worst addictions. You're, you're chained at my feet, but you put the chains on. I didn't do much. You gave me the power that I have over you. So, um... Yeah. So yes, it's an it's a yes to that question. It is a feeling of being a gift from you know the divine, of course. But there is a sense here again, like in a warning about lives and future lives, past lives, and it's not being an every lifetime thing. And when you get together, you utilize. It's like kind of like tricking the darkness to your advantage um, to create versus. Uh, you know something negative or destroy with so very very interesting i'm going to kind of go back over this a little bit myself to kind of like wrap my mind around that and that was pretty wild um so yeah hopefully everyone has enjoyed this vampire reading vampire love reading for 2020 and so angel blessings to everyone and oceans of love